G'day, A.G. Mahar here. On the topic of people with BPD, and do they have empathy? Is it empathy or is it projective identification? Well, the first disclaimer here, the caveat is not all people with BPD are the same. Many people have healed and recovered from BPD. Many people are close to that. Many people with BPD are in solid treatment and making lots of progress. And that recovery, by the way, is not only dealing with the internal landscape, changing and healing that, but also changes behavior and relational and communication abilities. So I want to give an example here that I've heard a lot of clients speak about. A lot of clients say, well, yeah, okay, so the person I was with with BPD or my BPDX, or they seem to have so much empathy for animals. Like they have, like maybe they have their own pets, cats, dogs, whatever else that are pets. Or in the street and, you know, you're out somewhere and you see, like they see an animal that's been run over by a car. And they just weep and they cry and they have so much empathy. That's what a lot of people have said to me. And I'm not here to say that people with BPD don't have the capacity for empathy because they do. But it can be suspended in many instances of triggers, dysregulated emotion, stress, etc. So there's the capacity for it doesn't mean it's always present. Now, here's a misnomer because a lot of people think that people with BPD have so much empathy when they have all this empathy for an animal, whether it got run over by a car and they'll bawl about it, or whether they see an animal get hit by a car and they're trying to rescue it, which I think most of us would try to do. I don't know, pick an animal that, you know, animals in a park. And animals like ducks, you know, ducks or geese or whatever in a park or whatever animals might just be just in an average park, not an animal park or a zoo. And, and they're kind of vulnerable, right? Because people could really be mean. People could do horrible things to them. So What's happening for the person with BPD who is so seemingly empathic for this, for any horrific thing that befalls an animal or, you know, or the animal seems, you know, is injured, is ill, is whatever, whether they own it or it's an animal outside somewhere. Why do they feel so much about that? Many people wonder who've been with someone with BPD and yet when you feel hurt, when they've hurt you, when you maybe end up crying, you're so hurt. And they may or may not, you may or may not cry around them. They don't see that. They don't get that. You know, people with BPD, when it comes to this seemingly super empathy for animals, but they can't even understand what they're doing to someone else, which is, you know, like a little bit of a deeper issue. But when you hurt and when you try to discuss that with them, even if you're not saying, hey, you did this, they don't really take it in. Like not everybody with BP is the same, but many don't. So what's happening here really when someone with BPD seems to have so much empathy for an animal, whether it be their own or someone else's, and they can ball on the street when one has, you know, been hit by a car or whatever, but they don't have the same response to people. Is that really empathy? No, in a lot of cases, it's not. There might be some empathy in there, but what is it more predominantly than empathy from somebody with untreated BPD for sure? It's projective identification and it's projection. And what's the main difference between projection and projective identification? Projection has to do with inter psychic dynamics and projective identification is a very primitive form of relating. So when projective identification for the person with BP and treated is at work, the projector feels at one with the other person. So does that really mean in the case of uh, this quote empathy unquote for animals that in projective identification, the person with BPD feels like they are one with the animal? like you would feel one with another person in projective identification because that projector feels at one with the other person. Yes, this is exactly what's going on when you think they've got so much empathy for something else or like animals, for example. So, and what exactly is projective identification, right? It's a defense mechanism in which the individual projects qualities that are unacceptable to the self 
onto another person generally. And the person internalizes the projected qualities and believes him or herself to be characterized by them and justifiably. So in other words, an animal has a certain vulnerability as people have vulnerability. An animal that gets hurt, wounded or worse, is so too has the person with BPD been hurt, wounded and worse. Not either or, and, and, you know, it's it's all three in more cases than not. And so in the case of the animal with all the supposed empathy, the projective identification is a defense against seeing, projecting themselves, right? Identifying, over identifying with the animal and something about the animal that they are uh, internalizing as if it were them that just met with the fate of an animal or is in some distress like an animal or the vulnerability. You know, I use this as an analogy, the vulnerability of ducks and geese and, you know, other animals just running around doing whatever they do in a park. Sometimes people with BP might say, well, you know, I feel really like, wow, like these animals could get really hurt by somebody. So, but people with BPD, this is not empathy. It's projective identification and projection. And they are experiencing in an unconscious way while giving seemingly so much empathy to the bird, the dog, the cat, the whatever, or maybe other, um, some something else, but not you in a relationship with them and not other people per se. It's really all about their vulnerability projected out onto the animal or what happened to the animal. And there are some correlates and connections to how people with BPD could feel similar things, or it's not the same, but could feel inside uh, hurt or wounded or even worse emotionally or psychologically and, and see the vulnerability in these animals and think they're being so empathic and caring so much about them. But the, what they're really doing is experiencing their uncon what's in their unconscious is not in their conscious awareness. They're experiencing their own hurt, woundedness, emotional sort of lack of beingness to the rest of the emotional development. And so they are over identifying with the plight of an animal or, yeah, you know, it seems like any, and often not people, but the vulnerability of an animal, the, the pain or the adverse experience of an animal, they are over identifying. So they're becoming one with the animal. There's no separation there between what's happening with the animal in this example versus what's happening for them because they feel like the animal is mirroring what they're feeling uh, in, in the sense of what's happened to it, in the sense of if it's in distress, in the sense of if it's, it's a vulnerable and it could be hurt. So this isn't empathy and BP. This is just one way I'm trying to explain this, right? One vehicle through, which is a little bit difficult when like an animal has been hit by a car and, you know, is no longer here. But the bottom line, it, it, it is projective identification and projection. And then it's like, it's the way that the person with BPD, you know, the projective identification is, is like that animal becomes the mirror for, for what they're feeling, for what's going on with them. And there are lots of correlations around vulnerability, distress in an animal, etc., that the person is projecting out, projected, projective identification onto that animal and if you're sitting there next to them crying or hurt or devastated, and you're not even trying to ask them why they did what they did, they will just be defensive in a different way. And the projective identification that they have with other people when they're close to them, it just gets suspended because you stop reflecting. So the projector stops working <clears throat> and you stop reflecting them to them when you're hurting it's like well you're hurting so then how are they going to be okay like what about the identity they're seeking through you and so it doesn't mean that people with BPD can't have empathy but this is a, a prime example where I've been asked by so many clients well how come my borderline you know whichever relationship type whichever gender cries and weeps over animals but like doesn't 
have a sense of what I feel at all or doesn't seem to have empathy for me. Well, that's exactly why, because it's not really empathy for the animal as much as it seems like it is. Often what looks like BPD empathy is projective identification and projection. And again, in projective identification, you get the intrapsychic dynamics and the not in the conscious awareness of the people with BPD untreated. And then you get the primitive form of relating. And so in this projective identification at work with an animal or in some other situation, the projector feels at one with the quote other. And so when it's all about the lack of self in people with BPD, then it can't be empathy. But having said that, remember they have the capacity for empathy. But that doesn't mean it's always going to be demonstrable or that they're going to be able to empathize with you. But, but I hope that explains at least why so many people experience a person with BPD seeming so empathic about animals or something else and not about people and specifically not about you if you are their partner or a family member, sibling or whatever, or you are now their ex.